Welcome to Module 3. In this module, we will begin to play some games with OPSI and COG, and in so doing, demonstrate how you can begin to take control of both OPSI and COG's behaviour and manage your thinking for better results in all aspects of your life. Look at this picture, and what do you see? OPSI formed a snap judgement about the information in front of her. I'm going to imagine that you looked at this picture and your OPSI told you immediately this brown-haired man was angry. OPSI takes in the information in front of her and then scans the memory systems inside the brain to align what she's presented with with the information she already has learnt through your life's experience. You've seen angry faces before, so your OPSI immediately tells you that this person is angry. Let's present you with a different challenge. A challenge that will force COG into action. What is 17 times 24? OPSI will immediately tell you that the answer is not 14,572. And will also know that the answer is not 98. But OPSI will not be sure if the answer is 516. In fact, if presented with these three options, OPSI will probably choose 516. To be confident of the correct answer, you will need to deploy COG and very probably some mental arithmetic thinking strategies that you have been taught in your life to come up with the correct answer of 408. This deployment of COG and the thinking system used by COG to get the correct answer was probably quite hard work. What psychologists and neuroscientists have discovered over the last 50 years is that OPSI, in her rush to make decisions and move on to the next challenge, can be easily tricked by situations she comes across. Let's consider this example from Daniel's book. Which is the longer of the two lines? Even if you've come across this example before, you will still find OPSI trying her best to tell you that the bottom line is longer than the top. This is called the muller lyer illusion and is a well-known experiment. And whilst OPSI is looking at the lines and telling us that the bottom one is longer than the top, those of you who have seen this before know all too well that they are in fact the same length. And in your case, COG is overruling OPSI, telling you that this is an optical illusion. Now that you know this, look again at the lines. You can now see, because COG is telling you, that the lines are in fact identical lengths. You will now store this new information in your long-term memory. And in the future, when you see this image, OPSI will draw on this knowledge in your memory. And kick COG into action. You will still see the lines as different lengths, but the combination of the new knowledge and ringing alarm bells will be forcing COG into action to overrule what OPSI is telling you about what she is seeing. Let's create a situation which will push COG to the limits of his abilities. This is about as testing a mental challenge as COG is ever likely to be faced with, and will demonstrate the effort involved in getting COG into action and working effectively on a difficult mental challenge. The challenge is straightforward, and here is an example. You will be shown four numbers, and then you will hear a recording of a one second interval hand clap. Every second clap, say out loud the number, but having added one to each of the four digits. So 5294 would become 6305, then 7416, then 8527, and so on. Ready? So here are the claps, and go. How hard was this to do? And how quickly did you give up? If you found it easy, try doing it again, but adding three digits this time. Here is another example. A bat and a ball cost one pound 10 pence. The bat costs one pound more than the ball. 
So how much does a ball cost? You've probably decided that the answer is 10 pence. Now force Cog to take on the question. If the ball costs 10 pence and the bat is one pound more than the ball, the bat and ball would cost one pound 20. For the bat and ball to cost one pound 10, the ball would actually cost five pence. The bat being one pound more would cost one pound and five pence plus a five pence ball totaling one pound 10. Try another. Is this statement logical? Opsi probably told you that yes, the statement is logical. Although by now you've done a few of these, so COG is in full swing looking out for flaws in Opsi's analysis of the statements. Let's look again. Just because some flowers fade does not follow that some roses must fade. There could be no fading roses in the flower kingdom. But because of the nature of Opsi, you've probably gone with this sounding logical. These examples illustrate how Opsi will always give you an answer to any challenge facing her, but she will not always be correct. What is crucial is that you know when to kick the laid back cog into action and where possible, give cog the thinking strategies to undertake every challenge to the best of his abilities. Have a look at the image. Is the man on the right larger than the man on the left? Opsi is telling you that the answer is yes. And if you've seen this before... Then Cog is screaming at you, no, they are all the same size. So have a look with rulers added. And even when we remove them, Opsi is still telling you the man on the right is bigger. All of these experiments have been carried out on thousands of subjects with similar results. In the second part of Can I Teach Thinking, we will start to explore the impact that teaching thinking can have on the performance of your students. So this is the end of part one. Launch the selective attention test video below. Then having listened to Daniel Simons walk you through this awesome one minute experiment, click down and launch the next video selective attention test two. Once you've enjoyed both of these, Launch part two of Can I Teach Thinking to learn more about your amazing brain. If you're watching this in a school, the firewall may very well block the next two videos. If this is the case, please move on to part two.